In today's video, we're going to be learning how to simplify fractions. Simplifying fractions is probably something that you're going to be asked to do when you're finished with a fraction problem. One thing to remember is that when simplifying fractions, you are not changing the value, but rather reducing the fraction to its simplest form. The simplified fraction should be equivalent to your original fraction in value. So, to simplify fractions, we have a couple of steps. We really have to find a common factor and divide the numerator and the denominator by that common factor. Specifically, if you want to do this in the least amount of steps, you find the greatest common factor and divide both the numerator and the denominator by that greatest common factor. So let's start with example one. We have four twentieths. Now one technique to find the greatest common factor would be to list the factors of both 4 and 20. So let's try that now. So we have 4, put that there, and the factors of 4, whenever I'm figuring out the factors of a number, I like to start with 1 and the number itself because those are an easy way to get 2 out of the way. So we'll start with 1, and I'll put 4 over here, put a comma. So we have 1 and 4. Um, another factor of 4 is 2, 2 times 2, so since it's 2 times 2, we can just write 1, 2, and that's all. There's only 1, 2, and 4. So let's list the factors of 20. We have 1 and 20. We also have 2 and 10. And then there's also 4 and 5. And that's it. There's no other factors of 20. Um, so if we look at these two lists of factors, we see that we have a 1 in common. We also have a 2 in common. And we have a 4 in common. So it's looking like the greatest common factor is 4. So now what we have to do is divide both the numerator and the denominator by that greatest common factor. So if we divide 4 by 4 and 20 by 4, that gives us 4 divided by 4 is 1 over 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now I have students ask me sometimes if they're done um, reducing or if there's more steps to go. And one thing you can remember is if the only factors of your numerator and denominator, only common factors, uh, the only common factor is 1, then you're reduced as far as you can go. So, so in this example, the only factor between 1 and 5 is 1, so we know that we are done reducing, and 1 fifth is our simplest form. Let's go on to number 2. We have 8 28ths. So if we list the factors, let's start with 8. We can start with 1 and 8. 8 can also be divided by 2 and 4. And that is it. So it's 1, 2, 4, and 8. We can get rid of one of these commas here. Rewrite that like this. Put the 8 right there. Now for 28, start with 1 and 28. 28 can also be divided by 2. And that would be 2 and 14. And we also have 4 and 7. So now if we look at these factors, common factors are 1. We also have 2. We have 4. And that is it. So again, 4 seems to be our greatest common factor. So we'll divide both by 4. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. And 28 divided by 4 equals 7. So again, we have to think, do 2 and 7 have any factors that are other than 1? And no, they do not. So we know that 2 sevenths is our lowest form, our most simple form. So we are done. Let's try number 3. So sometimes you might not want to think about all the factors, or you might notice that two numbers uh, 
have a common factor and you just want to try it. And you're you're welcome to do this. So we can do that with number three. So if you notice, 6 and 24 are both even numbers, so we know that they can both be divided by 2. So 2 is a factor of both of them. So we can just start out by dividing both by 2 without listing out the factors. That would give us 6 divided by 2 equals 3, and 24 divided by 2 equals 12. Now if you look at this 3 twelfths, that is a reduced form of 6 24ths. Um, but is it the simplest form? Are we done? So if we think about this, 3 and 12, do 3 and 12 have any common factors other than 1? Well, the factors of 3 are 1 and 3. And the factors of 12 are 1, 12, 3, and 4. So if you notice, they do still share a common factor other than 1, and it's 3. So we would still have to go divide both by 3, which would equal 3 divided by 3 equals 1, and 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Now, 1 and 4 only share 1 as a common factor, so we know that that is the simplest form, and we're done. We could have started off by dividing by 3, and then we would have had to divide by 2, or we could have started off by dividing by 6, and we would have got straight to 1 fourth. All three paths lead to the same answer, and as long as you remember to keep checking to make sure that your numerator and denominator don't have any common factors other than 1, and you don't stop until they do, you'll always come to the same um, answer. And if you notice something about all these um, first three examples, the answer we got is equivalent to the starting fraction. 1 fifth is equivalent to 4 twentieths, 2 sevenths is equivalent to 8 twenty-eighths, and 1 fourth is equivalent to 6 twenty-fourths. So let's move on now to number 4 and try this one. We have 10 30 thirds. So let's list out the factors of 10 first. We have 10. So the factors of 10, we have 1 and 10. Put some commas. We have 2 and 5. So those are the only factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10, and let's list out the factors of 33. We have 1 and 33. We have 3 and 11. And so those are the only factors of 33, 1, 3, 11, and 33. So if we look here, we have 1 as a common factor. Let's see, do we have any others? So no, 2, 5, 10, 3, 11, and 33. So 33 and 10 only share 1 as a common factor. So that means that this uh, example, in this example, 10 33rds is in its most reduced form. It's in its simplest form. So you can't simplify that example any more than it already is. And sometimes you'll get problems like this, and, and that's okay. As long as you check to make sure that the numerator and the denominator, the they don't have any common factors greater than 1 or other than 1, um, you can be confident that that fraction is in its simplest form. So let's try a couple more examples. As always, uh, if you're feeling confident and you want to try these on your own, uh, feel free to pause the video and follow along with me as I go through the solutions. And if you just want to see a little bit more review, then just keep on watching. So with simplifying fractions, as you continue to do them and you get better at it, uh, you'll start to notice um, factors without having to list them out, and you'll get faster at it. So one thing to look for when you're doing this is to see if you can find any common factors right off the bat. So let's see number five. We have 20 fiftieths. So hopefully you're looking at this and thinking that both 20 and 50 end in a zero, which means that they're both divisible by 10, because any number that ends in a zero is divisible by 5 and 10 and 2. Um, so we know that both 20 and 50 are divisible by 10. 10 is a pretty big number, so we can just start off with that and see if that gets us to our simplest form. So if we divide 20 by 10 and 50 by 10, that equals 20 divided by 10 is 2, and 50 divided by 10 is 5. Now if we look at 2 and 5, we try to think, do they have any factors, common factors, um, other than 1. And if you think about that, they do not. Um, so 2 fifths is the simplest form of 
20 fiftieths. So that right there is a good example of one where you wouldn't necessarily have to list out all the factors if you notice that 20 and 50 both in a zero, um, and so they're both divisible by 10. So circle that. So let's try number six, nine fifty-fourths. Now some of you might know the greatest common factor in your head when you're looking at this, and if you do, good job. But if not, let's list them out. We have nine, so the factors of nine are one and nine, because one times nine equals nine, and then the only other numbers that can be multiplied together to make nine is three, it's three times three. So we just have three, so one, three, and nine. And the factors of 54 are one and 54. There's a lot of factors of 54 here, so bear with me. We have two and 27. We also have three and 18. And we have six and nine. So those are all the factors of 54. So if we notice, we have one as a common factor, three as a common factor, and nine as a common factor. So the greatest common factor is nine. So let's divide both by nine. And as I said, some of you might have noticed that right off the bat that 9 and 54, the greatest common factor is 9. And so again, if you did, good job. You could have just went straight to the step. But if not, no worries. Just list them out and you'll find it that way. So 9 divided by 9 is 1. And 54 divided by 9 is 6. So again, we look at our numerator and denominator. Notice that the only common factor is 1. So we know that we're done. So our answer is one-sixth. Let's try number seven. We have 22 one-hundred-and-tenths. Now, these is a bigger number, and so it could be a little intimidating, but we can always go through our same steps and come to an answer. So let's start with 22. I'll write 22 here and list out the factors of 22. We have one and 22. We also have 2 and 11. And that's it. 1, 2, 11, and 22. Those are the only factors of 22. So now let's list out the factors of 110. This is a bigger number, so there's probably going to be more factors. We have 1 and 110. We also have 2 and 55. 2 times 55 equals 110. We have 5 and 22. And we have 10 and 11. Now some of you might have noticed um, that 22 and 110 both share 11 as a factor. Um, you might have noticed this even without listing out the factors. Um, but what many of you probably didn't know because um, most people wouldn't know this off the top of their head, is that 22 is a factor of both 22 and 110. So 22 ends up being their greatest common factor. So if we divide both by 22, we should get our simplest form. So 22 divided by 22 equals 1, and 110 divided by 22 equals five. So one and five, the only common factor they share is one, so we know that this is our simplest form, so our answer is one fifth. Let's try our last example here, number eight. We have 32 48ths. So we can list out the factors of 32. That would be one and 32. We have two and 16. And then we also have 4 and 8. So that would be the factors of 32. Now let's list the factors of 48. As always, we can start with 1 and 48. I'm going to put it down here because I know 48 has a lot of factors. We have 2 and 24. 
We also have 3 and 16. We have 4 and 12. And we have 6 and 8. All right, so now if we look at these, let's try and see what the largest common factor is. We have 1. We also have 2, also have 4, and 8. These two numbers share a lot of common factors, but their largest happens to be 16. So we'll draw circles around there. So 16 is their greatest common factor. So let's divide both the numerator and the denominator by 16. So we have 32 divided by 16 and 48 divided by 16. 32 divided by 16 is 2, and 48 divided by 16 is 3. So we get 2 thirds, and we think, do 2 and 3 share any common factors other than 1? They do not, so our final answer is 2 thirds. So hopefully this video helped you all out, and you have a better understanding of how to simplify fractions. Thanks for watching.